Hi guys. Well, you will not believe this, but it is a spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking about an over the top beautiful September day here in the collapse of everything here at Bugs in a Jar Farm where we have breezed into <coughs> it is a Friday. Friday, September 6, 2024, and uh, so since it is Friday, uh, we all know what that means. We know what that means. It is time for our weekly Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant, where we dive into... Uh, Good Lord, the mainstream media, the, quote, alternative to the mainstream media, every kind of media in between, medium.com, and uh, don't forget, right here at good old YouTube, where, uh, when was it, a couple of weeks ago, I was, I, I was including, uh, I, I, I put Guy McPherson right next to Bill uh, Reese in my, uh, in, in my <laughs> uh, Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup. So today we're going to juxtapose Johan Rockstrom and Donald Trump to, to lead off. Uh, so we are going to uh, start off with, uh, I now might nominate this man uh, as the single biggest apocaloptimist, hopium-soaked former doomer on the planet. This is this jackass named Johan Rockstrom. Johan Rockstrom is... Uh, you know, he is the guy who came up with the nine planetary boundaries that as soon as we start stepping over these boundaries, the planet is doomed. That, uh, that Johan Rockstrom, well, he is back on TED Talks, I noticed here recently. Johan Rockstrom back on TED Talks to discuss <clears throat> the tipping points of climate change and where we stand. I, I would love to play some of those guys, but I don't need the copyright strike from TED Talks. But here is the, uh, the description of this 18 minute, I think is what TED Talks are, descent into hopium soaked apocaloptimism. We're nearly halfway through the 2020s, dubbed the most decisive decade for action on climate change. Where exactly do things stand? Climate impact scholar Johan Rockstrom offers the most up-to-date scientific assessment of the state of the planet and explains what must be done to preserve Earth's resilience to human pressure. And uh, for about the first 15 minutes, uh, the old Johan that we uh, dimly remember, for about the first 15 of the 18 minutes, uh, Johan uh, does a pretty good uh, scientific access uh, assessment of how completely, irretrievably, irrevocably fucked we are. Well, I think he said we have now uh, crossed or are in the middle of crossing six of his nine planetary boundaries that uh, we're heading, uh, we're going to blow right past this bullshit one and a half. I think he says we're heading to three degrees. He spends 15 or so minutes uh, I explaining how it ain't gonna happen. There is no fucking way to uh, to turn this freight train around 
and then of course uh, you know since he wants to be invited back again to ted talks he wraps up by going from that scientific uh, assessment of how fucked we are to this absolute unadulterated horseshit uh, hopium where he actually he actually pulls out the rapidly closing window of opportunity that a uh, humanity is going to rise to the challenge he is fully confident that humanity is going to rise to the challenge before that rapidly closing window of opportunity slam shut as he says there is still light shining there is still light shining through that window of opportunity yes but of course he does not mention he does not explain one way what must be done to preserve Earth's resilience to human pressure. Nowhere in the talk. He pulls this shit out of his ass about some goddamn uh, rapidly closing window of opportunity. Uh, all the little limp dick lefties uh, cheering him on. I see it has 527,000 views, 17,000 thumbs up from these clueless fucking morons uh, talking about uh, the light shining through the, uh, the, the window of opportunity. Good God, just shut the fuck up. Uh, anyway, so what is... Uh, well, I know uh, Donald Trump is showing up somewhere in here uh well 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 anyway i remember the headline although it seems to have disappeared so i guess donald trump's latest uh is this a bright green lie or just a diarrhea brown lie so now donald trump is trumpeting on the uh, on the campaign trail that uh if he is elected that he is going to cut, he is going to cut Americans' energy cost in half within within 12 months of him uh, getting back into the White House. The average American will be paying one half, one half of the energy cost. Uh, that uh, that we're paying now, uh, and even the the mainstream media. I think it was NBC News howling in in derision at Donald Trump, claiming uh, that that he has the uh, the power to affect uh, America's energy costs at all. You know, th th this is one of the main. Uh, lies that you that you hear uh, from from pretty much everybody, uh, completely failing to understand that the president of the U.S. has virtually no control over the price of a gallon of gas or anything else uh, on uh, on the energy cost spectrum. It, 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 there, there is nothing uh, th that that any president can do uh, to to affect this. Uh, ain't ain't gonna happen. Uh, Donald Trump knows goddamn well, and, and 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 all of these clueless morons. Anyway, I'm wasted enough of my breath on that guy. So. Uh, let, let, let's just dive around here. So, Caitlin Johnstone, that little lefty, uh, <clears throat> Caitlin, she's kind of like a, a female Chris Hedges, Caitlin Johnstone. All right, this morning, her newest essay, Revolution, is now. Yes, people are always asking me, what? 
what can we do to fight the tyranny and depravity of the empire and create a healthy world? Well, there you go. So what can we do? Uh, the truth of the matter is that in the here and now, there are no easy and immediate solutions to the problems we face in our world. The system is far too deeply entrenched and people are far too deeply in indoctrinated with propaganda to be persuaded to fight against it right now. So she says, she admits it ain't gonna happen right now. It ain't gonna happen right now, but what is happening right now is that people like Caitlin Johnstone and her saber rattling, her uh, her little uh, far left lefties, uh, it, it, we're we're going to foment revolution. Yes, an effective an effective solution that we can all begin applying in the here and now is working to foment a revolutionary zeitgeist by spreading awareness of the depravity and tenacity of the empire. Yes. The machine is far too big and powerful for us to take it down on our own but if enough minds can become unplugged from the narrative matrix, we can definitely bring it down together. Once enough minds are pointed at the project, more concrete solutions will emerge and begin gaining traction in our collective consciousness. Yes. Uh, so let's get to work expanding it. Uh, the, the more eyes are open to what is going on, the more hands we will have working toward the task of waking up the others. This allows for the possibility of non-linear growth, which means things could move very quickly from looking impossible to looking inevitable. Well, uh, Caitlin, they already are looking inevitable. Uh, anyway, good Lord, guys. Uh, Okay, you know, as long as we're talking about lefties, and, and seriously, uh, 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 kudos to those lefties over at Huff Post uh, and, and the editors for at Yahoo News for featuring this article right here in the mainstream media. Yahoo News, Huff Post, Coral Restorations Wake Up Call. Starting uh, with the sentence, too fucking hot. Yes. Coral Restoration's wake up call. Rebuilding degraded coral reefs started as a noble endeavor, but now some coral scientists are confronting a dark reality. The dark reality being that this uh, entire notion of uh, restoring coral reefs is a bunch of ain't gonna happen, hopium soaked horse shit. And all of these scientists who actually believed this 
unadulterated horseshit. Uh, I, I was uh, hitting the ain't gonna sh happen bullshit detected button the very first time I ever heard about this crap when uh, there were a, a lot more coral reefs on this planet than there are now and, uh, and more and more the jury is coming in uh, on this that the coral reefs are fucked. Uh, anyway, here is, uh, let's just jump ahead. The situation, and they're particularly looking at the reef around Florida, the situation in Florida and around the globe has some coral scientists confronting a dark reality. Coral restoration, which started as a noble endeavor back when humans were not this far down the road of climate breakdown, is bearing little fruit. It has failed to keep up with wave after wave of loss. <coughs> Yet, it remains the bulk of what is being done to help ailing reefs. And scientists in the field are scrambling to figure out what comes next with no clear consensus. This is uh, one of these coral reef scientists, Ken Nedemeyer, Quote, what we are doing, what we were doing 10 years ago was working, and it was the strategy that we could do at the time, but things are changing fast. This year in particular should have been a wake up call to everybody. What we were doing and are doing is not going to work. We have got to do something different to rinse and repeat, you know, with this coral, to keep going with coral restoration, to rinse and repeat, the results are going to be exactly the same, which is failure. And then I love it. HuffPost, the canary is dead. The canary is dead. Thank you, HuffPost, uh, for a pretty much a hopium-free, flat-out uh, expose uh, on wild coral reefs uh, are, are fucked. Uh. Without government policies to aggressively combat a global threat, coral scientists will be left to keep spinning their wheels while reefs in Florida and around the globe vanish. And if you're curious how many comments on a planet of 8 billion people uh, about the most honest assessment I have ever read in the mainstream media about coral reefs, if your answer is one comment, a uh, comment, uh, give yourself a gold star. So kiss the coral reefs goodbye. Okay. Uh, I already did the full rant yesterday about how the world is pumping out somewhere between 57 million tons and 400 million tons.
depending on how you define it, uh, plastic pollution a year. Uh, I am uh, I'm actually going along with the United Nations on this one, 400 million tons, and uh, which is going to triple to 1.2 billion tons uh, per year between now and 2050. Uh, but of course, the uh, United Nations says, don't worry, we, uh, the United Nations is going to save the planet from plastic pollution by drawing up a new treaty later this year. Okay. Uh, what does Eric Lee have to, you know, I've been, Eric Lee has been on a tear uh, for scouring the, the Doomosphere, and in this case, the techno-utopian sphere for examples of, of, of papers and essays, and in this case, a book-length manifesto to uh, to deride, and this one is a a new vision for the advancement of humanity from the techno humanist manifesto by some uh, uh, lunatic never heard of named Jason Crawford. The uh, Eric's first two words of his essay are Jason who? Jason who? Jason Crawford is the founder of the Roots of Progress, a nonprofit dedicated to building a culture of progress, of human progress for the 21st century, and the author of the Techno. Humanist Manifesto. He is recognized as a leading thinker in the progress movement. Yes. Uh, I I anyway. Uh, this is, this, this is uh, Jason's lead in to this. Another manifesto, Ted Kaczynski's manifesto was worth reading, and he uh, links you over to Uncle Ted's manifesto. Maybe I am wrong about everything and should become a degrowth apostle and join the church of techno-optimists smoking techno-hopium. Doing so would feel better, but... Maybe I should pretend to consider the new vision before fighting and, if need be, dying for the advancement of humanity. The following is an introduction from the book The Techno-Humanist Manifesto by Jason Crawford. Uh, In, 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 anyway, we're just going to go down, uh, I, I, you, you can imagine. Let's just get down to the last paragraph of the introduction to the Techno-Utopian Manifesto. Uh, good Lord, this looks like a... You know, it looks kind of like, I don't know, a, a Buck Rogers uh, or fantasy or a Jetsons cartoon. Okay. No matter who you are, I hope this book gives you a new and powerful way of thinking about the nature of human beings, our relationship to nature and the role of science, technology, and industry in human life. But above all, I want to inspire everyone who reads this to dream of a better future 
and to work in some way, small or large, to advance the grand project of human progress. There you go. Thank you, Jason Who. All right, from that unadulterary, unadulterated horseshit. Okay, I love it when the mainstream media, this in this case, the Los Angeles Times, asking a question in a headline. The question of the day from the LA Times being, has a UC Berkeley chemistry lab discovered the holy grail of plastic recycling? The answer to the question, which is kind of the answer they give, uh, the answer to the question, has a UC Berkeley chemistry lab discovered the holy grail of plastic recycling? The answer is no. Okay. We're, we're going to go uh, right here. I want to thank Sandy for sending me this one. Right here to the Finger Lakes of New York. <coughs> where <coughs> I have been pointing out these algae blooms showing up this year about uh, 50 feet from where I'm sitting. Algal blooms ravaged New York's Finger Lakes during the final week of August, no other region in the state had a comparable level of outbreaks. All right, so this is what happened uh, pretty much looking right here, well, pretty much in my own creek, 50 feet from here. They're looking at... Um, They're, they're, you know, they're, they're basically looking, uh, starting on August 26th, uh, August 26th is when they really, they, this all hell broke loose out here in the Finger Lakes. Meanwhile, Governor Hochul's administration has touted a $42 million dollar Algae Bloom Prevention Program. Yes, that funds efforts by farmers to reduce nutrient runoff from their fields. This is New York Governor Kathy Hochul. Quote, New York continues to use every tool available as we build on local conservation efforts and assist our farmers and communities to improve resiliency, prevent pollution then that can contribute to harmful algal blooms, and take great strides to achieving our climate goals. Governor Hochul said in a press release dated August 23rd, August 23rd, she sends out this big press release how New York is uh, going to keep harmful algae blooms out of its waters. Three days later, the Finger Lakes of New York were hit by the single biggest bash of algae blooms in history. I've already uh, talked about this uh, th this one earlier this week, so I'm just going to to touch on it again from this medium writer Richard Lowenthal and his book length article "Disillusionment and Human Transformation." Yes, where in part two. Richard Lowenthal explains to us how, quote, 
conscious disillusionment. How conscious disillusionment can help us wake up and survive the coming collapse. Well, I ought to have no problem uh, surviving uh, the coming collapse because I've been conscious of my disillusionment for uh, about 15 years now. Yeah, so going right along with that, this is from some outfit called the Wiki Observatory. Not sure how this one crossed my radar. Why children's rights, why children's rights are critical for climate policy and environmental activism. Birth equity. Birth equity is essential for ecological security. Yes. Okay, in a nutshell, the climate crisis is primarily driven by human activities. There it is again, that old human activities, the main one being uh, the refusal to keep one's pecker in their pants and to not let their knickers down, the number one uh, human activity bringing more humans into the world. <clears throat> the climate crisis is primarily driven by the human activity of bringing more children in the world that release greenhouse gases, but the deeper issue lies not in the fact that more children who never should have been born are being born, but is in how society is structured from birth. Society often views children as economic resources, future workers, consumers, and taxpayers, rather than empowered citizens with rights and voices. This mindset contributes to the climate crisis and other environmental issues, including ecosystem collapse and pollution. By focusing on children's rights and ensuring birth equity, we can reshape policies to protect the environment, human rights, and democracy. Yes. Okay, we're going, just, just three more quick ones. We're going to go to Sub-Saharan Africa, the shithole country of Gabon, where the Gabon Junta allows regulated logging, regulated logging of rare Kevazingo tree. Gabon's Junta has relaxed rules covering the rare Kavazingo tree, allowing logging under certain conditions of a hardwood species that can take 500 years to grow. There is high demand in Asia for Kevazingo wood, which is used to make chic tables and specialty guitars, among other things. Gabon's previous government outlawed Kevazongo logging in 2018. Yes. That exactly a year after the military ceased power, the Council of Ministries on Saturday approved a decree allowing Kevazingo to be logged in, quote, sustainably managed concessions. Yes, tracked with a geo-referencing system. Uh -huh. 
So from now on, a permit regulating international trade in wild animals and plants will be required to export these Kevazingo logs. Yes. Anyway, uh, we're just going to wrap up with two classic headlines from this outfit called the cool down the cool down i just need to read the headlines to wrap this up scientists use new technology to break major record in quest for limitless energy peak power exceeding 80 trillion watts you know there's one more article talking about how free limitless energy is going to save the planet when of course free limitless energy would be the final death nail in the coffin of a planet and we're going to wrap up with a game-changing headline from the cooldown scientist create game-changing device that can turn air pollution into salt within minutes air pollution into salts uh, into salt talk about a way to salt the fields of the planet let's just turn air pollution into salt but anyway I could go on with this but I think you get it so get out there and enjoy that uh, that blinding light through Johann Rockstrom's rapidly closing window of opportunity to get out there and turn this freight train around while you still can by joining Caitlin Johnstone's revolution. Bye guys.